So when a person looks at things from a narrow perspective of, that's absent of Torah, that's, that, that's removed from a Torah, it's impossible for them to have any of these good traits of good eye, good, uh, good neighbor, good uh, friend, anything. Needless to say, the teacher that's going to come to him and tell him, listen, I want to teach you everything, he is going to be shocked when he realizes this person doesn't want to learn anything. So you can't help a person that doesn't want to help themselves. Now, further, a person needs to know that you can't learn everything from everybody. This we also covered in our shuling, where you know, we uh, uh, talked about picking a rabbi and so on. A person needs to know that if you have a certain rabbi, a certain teacher, that he himself presents himself as an expert in one thing. He only teaches Allah, or he only teaches Hasidut, or he only teaches XYZ. That's him. He's not interested in your personal affairs. He's not interested in uh, all the other mumbo jumbo, or he simply not only not interested, he doesn't have the wherewithal, he doesn't have the tools. You wanted guidance with money. He's never made any money. So he has no idea about money. Never made any money, never studied about money, has not even covered the Gemara, the Masechta that discuss money. You have a whole section of the Gemara that discusses business. He has no clue. You ask him, what's the deen if somebody stole from me, but then he admitted that he stole it, does he have to pay me double, does he this? What's the deen if uh, I stole from a goy, but I didn't realize it, or I did realize it, what's the deen this, what's the deen that? He's like, oh, listen, you know, it's going to be okay. No, that's not going to be okay. You have to know that there's laws for everything. If he has no concept, to go and learn everything from him when he doesn't know everything, or he doesn't, he doesn't even want to teach you everything, it's obviously a mistake. Now, here the Chachamim are telling you, they know where they stand. At that moment, they know where they stand and how they want to teach. They want to teach something specific. One wants to teach this, the other one wants to teach that. But Rabbi Lazar ben Arach says, no, 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 I want to teach, I want to be like my Rabbi, Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai, that he groomed us from Aleph Atta, from A to Z. That's what I want to do. Hence the reason why Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai says, that's why I identify with. He wants to do what I did and what I'm doing. Whereas the rest of you want to be experts in a specific subject, perfect. That you want to be experts in this, he wants to, all-encompassing. No problem. Now, if a person goes to the wrong doctor, they need to know that the amount of damage that will happen by going to the wrong doctor is really determined not by the doctor, but rather by the person themselves of how long it takes them to identify that they're attending the wrong doctor. Because sometimes a person does not, you know, they want the wrong medicine. One doctor tells them, listen, you need to take antibiotics. And the person says, no, no, I'm against antibiotics. Antibiotics are really poison. I really want something uh, more natural. I want this, I want that. And they go to a different doctor. Holistic doctor, natural doctor, unnatural doctor, whatever. They go to a different doctor. And the other doctor says, what do you want? He says, no, I want to get, maybe if you give me some flowers I could chew on, that's going to make me feel better. So doctor says, no problem. Here you go. Here's some flowers and some roses. Here's some tulips. We'll grind them for you here in the blender. $150. Oh, wow. It's a great deal. Much better. I don't even need insurance anymore. I can just pay $150 for the flowers. Perfect. How, many, how often should I come? Doctor says, as often as you want. So the guy comes every couple of weeks gets a bunch of flowers, grinds them, and he gets sicker and sicker and sicker. Now, whether he's going to die or not is determined based on how long it's going to take him to realize that he has a bad doctor. But it's his fault that he has a bad doctor. It's just like this person that goes to a dumb doctor and says, hey, doc, whatever I touch hurts. Everything hurts. I touch my head, it hurts. I touch my legs, it hurts. I touch my arms, it hurts. I touch my stomach, it hurts. So the dumb doctor says, okay, no problem. Let's take, uh, let's do some testing. Let's get some MRIs, some CAT scans, some x-rays, all the stuff that the insurance companies really love to pay for. Let's get you some tests. We'll test your arm, we'll test your legs, we'll test your stomach, we'll test your back, we'll test your head, we'll test everything. That's a dumb doctor. A smart doctor 
says to the patient, what hurts again? Everything I touch hurts. My stomach, my head, my legs, my feet, my uh, this, my stomach. Oh, let me see your finger. Oh, exactly. Your finger is broken. It's not your stomach or your legs or anything. It's that your finger is broken. So everything you touch hurts. That's a smart doctor. Now, to have a smart doctor is very, very fortunate. But unfortunately, many times people don't like the smart doctor. Why? Because sometimes the solution seems too quick, too easy. There has to be something else. The same goes with rabbinical advice. Same thing goes with Torah. Sometimes a person wants the bad doctor. The doctor that says, listen, if you drink this water, donate this amount, go and uh, do this one particular prayer or one particular telim, all of your problems are going to be solved. Reality is quite different. Usually the smart doctor is going to be the one that's going to tell you, listen, if you do tshuva, which is all encompassing, you start keeping Shabbat, start keeping Tarat Mishpacha, whatever you're not keeping, keep. In fact, tell me, what are you not keeping? When you see that the person doesn't even know what they're keeping, what they're not keeping, then you see that this person needs an all encompassing transformation. Now you can't tell him to do everything on day one, but you can't tell him that everything he's doing is perfect either. So the smart doctor is going to tell him certain things that he can change at that moment that are critical. Things that are less critical or simply things that he's incapable of even seeing the significance in, you wait for a better day. But you never tell the person that what they're doing is perfectly fine. You tell them, listen, there's more room to grow. We'll do this and then we'll grow to something else. I know maybe you're not ready for this, but it needs to come at some point. So a person that is going to go to such a doctor that's going to help them, a teacher, a rabbi, that's going to have the ability to give them life guidance, has to expect ongoing guidance that are going to constantly contradict his predisposition, what he thinks himself already. Because the way that the average person thinks is usually the opposite of what the Torah. And even if he and the Torah agree, it's similar to how even when the law of the land, the civil law, agrees with the lacha, usually it's for the wrong reason. So a person needs to know that their intuition is not only not worth very much when it comes to da Torah, but many times their intuition is the Yetzara. And they have to humble themselves as much and as often as possible in order to truly be on the right path. So the path that Rabbi Elazar ben, ben Arach is choosing is not a path for everybody because it's much more difficult. It's much more difficult to babysit people for years and years in hopes that maybe they're going to listen to more things than they don't. Because the truth is that even if you tell somebody 10 different things to do, and they listen to five of them. The reality is you most likely will still have a student that hates you at the end and abandons you. And in fact, even maybe even turns you into an enemy. Why? Because their choice of not listening to the other half of what you said is the reason for their failure. But instead, they see that their choice of choosing to do the first half of what you said is the reason for your, their failure. Never looking at the wrong in themselves. So the road that Rabbi Lazar ben Arach and Rabban Yochanan ben Zakai, his teacher, chose is certainly a much more difficult one. This is actually also another reason of why many great Rabbanim, like Rabbi Tzion Abba Shaul, used to outright tell people, no, no, don't be my Talmud. I don't want any Talmudim. Why? Because if you're my Talmud, I have to take responsibility for you. Who knows if you're listening, you're not listening. You know, in those days, it was, life was very, very different. They didn't have YouTube and and uh, videos everywhere where you could literally listen to the rabbi 24 hours a day, even not without ever seeing him in person. So he didn't want to take responsibility for all of these people he didn't know that just come once in a blue moon. He says, I'm going to have to go up to Shemaim. They're going to ask me, how come your student doesn't know Ilchot Nida? He was your student for 20 years. How come he didn't know? How come your student didn't know that he was supposed to fast on the 17th of Tammuz? How come your student didn't know that uh, you're supposed to uh, learn uh, the uh, 
Shtayim Ikra Bechat Targum, the weekly uh, Torah portion. Twice and then with uh, commentary once. How come your student didn't know these things? He was your student for 20 years. How come he didn't know? The rabbi gets, a, uh, gets it on the head for, for his students' lackings. So many of the gedolim didn't want students. No, no, I don't want any talmidim. I have to take responsibility for them. So many times when the student said, no, I want to be your talmid. They don't realize what it, te- what it actually entails. They don't realize what it entails. They want somebody that's going to give them high five and a pat on the back and answer whatever questions they have and they can choose what to listen to what not what to not to listen to and there lies the root of all failure both for the rabbi and for the student when the rabbi tells the truth and the student doesn't want to hear it or when the student doesn't look for the truth so the rabbi doesn't even know what he's looking for because they're not uh they can't read your mind 